Welcome to Own It, Your Business and Your Life, with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, so it's Nicola Cairncross here, and it's the Own It, the podcast, final episode of having a guest um, every week while Judith's been away. And today I'm delighted to welcome Sue Ravel to the call. Is that how you pronounce it, Sue? Uh, well, it's, I, I pronounce it as Sue Ravel. My brother, however, has always pronounced it as Sue Ravel, but, uh, which causes great confusion when I'm talking to my nieces and nephews. Yeah, sure so, um, <laughs> and, and actually, to be perfectly honest, since moving to Wales, I've learned to answer to almost. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. So, um, because because you are the only one of our co-hosts, and that is a great honour, actually, <laughs> the, um, to, that I don't know personally. And Judith, I don't think you know Judith personally, although we do we do sort of know of each other online, don't we? Yeah, we do. Um, so, tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. So, um, okay, a bit about me. Well. I guess my whole life has been about making a difference in the world. That's, that's, that's quite a big statement, isn't it? But with yeah. the exception of my first job, if we go back that far, um, immediately after leaving school, then all my career choices have involved somehow making a difference. So um, originally as a nurse, uh, then as a health service manager, moving into strategic planning, all my jobs when I was employed involved making a difference in the lives of patients and their families. And as my jobs involved more extensive leadership, then making a difference to staff as well. So when I set up my business at the beginning of last year, it seemed, I guess, just logical that that too would be focused around coaching and change management, both of which were a really integral part of every job I undertook in the last 20 so years of my health service career. And and, and I love that because you can't make change in organizations without creating individual change. And I I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's our awareness and our skills in self-leadership that um, how should I say, create the springboard really from which we inspire outstanding performance in others. Yeah, because so, I mean, change is one of the most scary things for people, isn't it? And within an organisation, I suppose they just, you know, they just want to go to work, do their job, come home, get paid, and, and in, to go into something that's going to make you feel uncomfortable on a daily basis in the place where you feel most safe is, is probably quite a challenge. It, it's a huge challenge, and two of the jobs in my career involved moving entire hospitals. Oh, so, wow. um, uh, yeah, I, I'm one of the few people, I think, in the UK who's played a leading role in opening two children's hospitals, um, one in Bristol and, and, and one here in Wales. And um, to manage that complexity of change, you, you develop a huge understanding of, of yourself as well as developing an understanding of those that you lead and work with. Uh, yeah, really fascinating jobs to do, but, but hugely demanding for everybody involved. Yeah. So what, what, made, you, um, what made you go off on your own then? Uh, I had the opportunity to be made redundant, and uh, I'd done that thing, I guess, when you realise you're possibly halfway through your career, <laughs> and you want to spend the next 20 years doing the same um, as you've already done. So I think during my early 40s, I was beginning to to think, to be open to the possibility that actually I didn't want to have one main career through, you know, throughout my life. Um, And I managed 29 years in the health service, didn't quite make the first year. Um, (laughs) It wasn't wasn't a neat finish, but um, actually it ended at the most perfect time for me. And, uh, and I've had so many opportunities in the last few years of, of working to really hone skills and build relationships that have been so, so beneficial in my own business. So, yeah. 
so it, it really was the most perfect transition. Probably just as well you didn't make it to the 30 if you've watched Casualty this week, because poor old Charlie Fairhead. <laughs> you know, it's a really weird thing you should mention that, because um, when I'm not coaching, um, one of the things I do is write for a, um, it, well, it started off as being a tennis writing position, voluntary, but for something called By the Minute Sports. And as that's taken off as, a, as an online community, so it's developed into other things, including TV, politics, life, you know, all music, all sorts of stuff. And I actually wrote up the episode on Saturday Night of Casualty. It was a really odd thing to do. So you, you report it minute by minute as, as the episode unfolds. And, um, and it was a really strange thing to do when there were so many parallels with my own career. Um, <laughs> there, there were stories of kind of... Um, Charlie and Josh and Duffy, that was like, that would have been me, and now I feel like a really old git. <laughs> not as old as I do, because I've been watching Casualty for 30 years, and I've not missed an yeah. episode. <laughs> it was quite a shocking episode, it was quite good, it made us jump several times. You're the only person I know that has also confessed to watching it for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's based it anyway. We mustn't get into a casualty conversation because we really could go. But the, uh, yeah, anyway. So, what? Tell me about your week. What's what does your week look like, Sue? This week coming? No, this um, week you just had. What does it look? What's your week like? So, it's been a really, it's been a quite a quiet week, I think, being the end of August. Um, lots of times for just a bit of self care over the weekend, which was lovely, just to relax and do strange things like write up casualty. Um, and it's also provided me with lots of opportunities for thinking because there are many things that are changing um, in my world and in my business at the moment. So oh. just to have space to think, to actually to sometimes consciously not think and just process it in other ways. Um, and, to, and to recalibrate, I think, has been a really important part of the last week for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, not terribly exciting in terms of interaction with other people, but a lot of you know a lot of taking stock and thinking forward. Yeah. So, so do you does you, on a normal week? I mean, you're right. Actually, it has been weirdly quiet this week and last mm. week. I found. You know, I, I don't I don't normally notice it, but I definitely have this year. So, but now my inbox is exploding again, <laughs> just in the last couple <laughs> of days. So, so what does a what does a week normally look like for you? What do you um, what would you typically spend a week doing? So I spend a lot of time uh, working with clients, one-to-one uh, -one work, which is uh, working with uh, leaders, largely, who want to be at the top of their game. So leaders or aspiring leaders. And uh, at the moment, they come from a whole range of backgrounds, which I am absolutely loving. Um, so people at the top of their game in sport, internationally, um, I've been working with a publisher in New Zealand, uh, a film producer, um, people who run their own online communities who want to get better at that, uh, right back to kind of a local NHS director. Um, so, so, you know, so a real, a real plethora, I suppose, of people popping up in my life at the moment. Uh, and, and, and what they have, all, what they all have in common is that they want to get better at doing that. And yeah. as a real um, admirer of excellence um, that you know that's the sort of work I love to do and how do you uh, how do you attract your clients and do you zone your diary well what's been really interesting because it's one of the things I guess I've taken stock of and, and in, in a way it's taking me into the thing about my week um, is having time to take stock has made me realize just how many of my clients come through referral and um, and at this stage in my business, which is you know, eight, um, 18, 20 months in, um, that feels lovely. It feels really nice to know you're doing a great job, that people are out there talking about what you do and recommending you. Uh, that, that is such a nice position to be in. Uh, and and you know, it just makes me feel really grateful um, to be in such a, a lovely position with a spread, as I say, that not only reaches across the UK, but as far away as New Zealand. Um, that was really special. It makes me feel deeply uncomfortable because, yeah. yeah, and Judith and I have talked about this on the podcast several times. Just to because clicks and leads, my um, Facebook ads business, 
doesn't mm -hmm. actually need, doesn't need lots of clients, but the, the ones that I've really um, been able to do my best work for because of their their particular business setup have all come from referrals, and it makes me feel really uncomfortable because I've got no control over it and I I can't enhance it in any way. Um, it's getting better because I've you know I've been rewriting the the science of getting rich online and uh, realizing you know the whole law of attraction thing is is mm. goes much deep, deeper with me than I thought it did, but um, but yeah, it makes me nervous the fact that I because it just feels like you can't control the flow of clients at all. I How agree. Get, so I think at a head level, I absolutely agree with you. It feels it feels risky, and that I need to do more work around sustainability. Um, but at a heart level, there is something about learning to trust. And I've had so many people say that to me in the first eighteen months of my business, and. Um, and I found that really hard. I'm, you know, I've, I've already confessed I've been a planner for quite a, a large portion of my career. Definitely, wouldn't and, I? <laughs> and suddenly, you go, my word, what is happening here? I, I can't plan it, as, you know, can't plan it like I used to. And, um, and that's taught me to trust. And, um, and, it, and, and to let go of something, I, I guess, to let go of trying to be in control all of the time. Um, so there are things that I want to improve, I want to make things more sustainable, to have controls around what I do, um, but at the same time there is something really important about learning to trust and, and to let go of, of permanently being in control. One thing for certain is it's, it's far less exhausting. Yeah. So do you let go and trust while still doing marketing activities? Yes. Um, so I, yeah, I'm very active in social media. There are other things I should be more. But here, I'm looking at a great big flip chart I wrote last week um, of all the things that I would like to be doing around um, around my marketing and being visible. Um, and in fact, that's one of the things I'm going to come on and talk about in the challenge of the week. I think is um, maybe I shouldn't share that just yet. Maybe it will give you a give you too much of a heads up, Nicola. <laughs> um, it is part of the subject I want to talk about in the challenge of the week. Okay. Um, I, th I think in keeping with all of your guests, um, I understand I am yet another guest that is going to talk about a personal challenge. Well, actually, you know, I don't, that's, that's completely cool with me. I mean, I think that if we talk about client challenges third removed, you know, third person removed, it's not as powerful as when you talk about a I real agree. personal situation. Because you can hear the emotion in people's voices. That's one beauty about podcasts. You can really hear, hear what people's, people are feeling. So, um, yeah. so find, just finally, before we move on from the thing about your week, so and, t and I'll tell you about mine. What, what did do you zone your diary? Do you have certain activities for certain days, and then have one-to-one um, -one clients on other days? Uh, at the moment, no. I'm pretty flexible. I like, I get so much out of coaching that I actually like to do it most days. <laughs> right. um, it, it, it really fires me up. That's that's why I do what I do. So, um, so I guess the energy that comes from doing my best work enables me to take that into the other areas of business. Um, so, so for me, it's really important to have that connection on a, on a regular basis. If not a daily basis, then at least most days of, of my working week. Oh, I see. So, so your, your client appointments enable you to connect on a deep level with, with what you love to do, and that fuels you. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Very yeah, nice. that, to me, that's really important. If I want to share that message or what I do with other people, it's really important to be connected, I think, to, to what it is you do. Otherwise, yeah. it, as, you, as you just said, it becomes really distant and removed. And, and I'm not here to try and impress people with knowledge. I want to share my experience. Yeah. So that's, that's really bit, important. And that's all, always better done in person. Yeah. Okay. Well, my week's you. been... Yeah, sorry? Tell us about you. <laughs> well, my week is um, it's been interesting because, as I say, it's been quite quiet in terms of e you know emails and client um, meetings and inquiries. But mm -hmm. I've been making plans for big changes. I'm so it's it's coming up to the six month mark since Steve died, and um, I've got to start changing my life, and I don't know how to do that. So I'm doing the classic thing that you know you do, which is sort of starting to make clearing out space. And okay. I'm trying to say yes to more. I've noticed how I've got into the habit of, you know, not, you know, all that things people tell you about, look after yourself and be kind to yourself and all that stuff. I think you yeah. get to a point where, you, you, you know, you, you can't keep doing that because it leads to a smaller world. 
So um, I was invited on the spur of the moment last week to go out for a curry with someone, and I really didn't want to say yes. Not because I don't like him or anything, I, people I really like very much. But I said yes, despite myself, and I really enjoyed the evening. And then the same person, funnily enough, um, I, I reached out to them about something on Skype, and they said, oh, do you want do you fancy popping over for lunch and we can talk about it? And I was like... He lives, in, he lives about 30 miles away, so it's not exactly popping. But uh, but I made I caught myself saying no, um, or going to say no, or say Thursday, or anything to not have to do it on the spur of the moment. And um, so I yeah. made myself say yes and go upstairs and get well changed done. and get in the car and set up the sat-nav and go. Um, and we ended up having a really um, lovely, if anyone's in the Chichester area, I highly recommend the Gribble Inn, G-R-I-B-L-E. Okay. The Gribble Inn in Oving, O-V-I-N-G. It's beautiful, lovely garden, a typical pub. In the winter, they have a massive big fire, and the food was great. So really, really nice um, really nice lunch. But the other things I've been doing this week are, you know, just tidying up everything. I've, I've just been going through Infusionsoft, making sure the links in the messages work, and rejigging the thing, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But um, it just you know just really using the time to to get everything streamlined for September because I'm I'm definitely seeing signs of life coming back. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. And well done you. It's, it's it's really hard to take those steps, isn't it? Even when you sometimes self care I think has to be about doing the right thing. Um, yeah, well, the, the hard even if it's not the easy right. thing. Yeah. So what's fueled your fire this week then, Sue? My fuel of the fire, now this is interesting because this is a bit of an advance notice of something that's about to happen. Um, in that, I've had an invitation to bring personal leadership to the MBA program at a uh, relatively local business school. And um, that's really exciting. Um, and, and a little unnerving as Somebody who, well, I'll be really honest, six months ago started a train the trainer program completely unexpectedly, having been offered an opportunity to do so, and can remember standing at the front of the classroom saying to just six people, saying, um, I'm, I'm no trainer, I'll never be a trainer, this is, this is not what I'm here to do. And now I'm faced with the prospect of lecturing 270 students. Um, <laughs> So I'm kind of quite amused at how it's unfolding, and it's such an amazing opportunity to share what I do that it's been really lovely that at no point have I thought, I can't do it. I've just kept thinking, how will I do that then? Yeah. Um, and that is a real fuel of the fire for me. It's a real personal development opportunity. And, and I, I think, I've, you know, I've, done, I've been around the kind of master's level stuff at university. I've had two um, very different but not always positive experiences studying at, at master's level. And it would have been really easy to take this back into my own experience of, of doing master's level study. But what I found myself doing is, um, is to think about what would have been useful to, of all the things I know now, what are the things that would have been most useful to me when I was in my first management post at 25? Uh, what are the things I, you know, I wish I had known then yeah. that would have made life so much simpler? Not necessarily easier, but, but simpler and less hard on myself. So, um, so that's been great for me because it's making me think about things in quite a different way. It's spreading my message to a completely different um, age group who's had a very different experience of life. Um, and, and it'll be good for me because it makes me learn more, it makes me research more, um, it makes me share my, my message in a different way. So yeah. um, I am, I'm hugely fueled by this, actually. It's such a great opportunity. And, um, and I think what it will do by creating this kind of, I guess, structure to the year ahead, it will be on a guest lecturing um, basis once a month. Um, it gives me a, potentially a structure for the business too over the next year. But every, my focus for each month um, in my university work will be stuff I can share in my blogs, in my videos, um, you know, on social media. So it gives me a really nice, neat route through the next nine months. 
Yeah, that's good, isn't it? I remember when we were doing the marketing for the um, Own It Summit, you know, the, uh, mm -hmm. the thing, oh, yeah, the yeah. thing. I, I remember it was nice because it gave my social media sharing a structure as well. We planned it all out, who we were going to promote on which day. Um, I've, I've got a mate called Pete who, who's um entrepreneur in residence at, oh, no, I can never remember if it's Sussex University, Brighton University or it's one of the two anyway and it and he does this and it must be so awesome for the students to be being taught by someone who's actually been in the trenches and works in the trenches every day and is coming from a real life experience point of view yeah i think yeah i think that's one of the things that yeah that's one of the things that's certainly come up in the discussion with um with the person i'm liaising with at the university and the other thing that um that i i guess perhaps i hadn't thought about until i talked to somebody who has this role at another business school um, and she was saying, you know, they, they, you know, they, the university, will probably tell you your numbers will, will drop off as, as the pressures increase um, over the year. And uh, what Sarah was saying has happened with her is actually her numbers increased over the year because it's such a different type of study for them. You know, it, it's not assessed, it's not a pressure. It's come and find out more about you and how you can be better at being you when it really matters and you get out there in the real world yeah so um so her experience has been quite different at the moment to what the university are perhaps anticipating in, in line with their usual trajectory of you know attendance and and, and student pressure yeah and and probably word of mouth getting around this this is quite this is really interesting and fun <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, good, good stuff. Yeah, lovely. And and this week I've been I mentioned Frank Kern's new book High Pay Consultant, which um. It actually seems to be marketing under two different uh, titles, which is interesting. But when you get down to it, it's the same book. So he's obviously split testing titles for it. One, the one I bought was called High Pay Consultant. And along with a conversation I had, Neil Stafford was the, the chap we interviewed on the summit for, about membership sites. He's a membership site guru. And um, mm -hmm. he, I had a conversation with him. And reading Frank's book as well, it, it made me scramble to, to turn the way, because I've, I've always worked on the um, funnel marketing principle where you get a lot of people at the top end you offer them you know something low cost and and people self-select through the funnel down to your yeah. level programs well neil was saying why don't you turn that round and offer them your top level membership first and then only then um if they don't buy that offer them the lower levels and i thought oh well, that's interesting and then frank oh, kern's book is yeah, yeah it is and 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 it's something you can only do when you've got you know good feelings about your products and services and, and you know what you can help how you can help people but frank's book's all about how and and you know it's, to be honest we it's nothing new because we've well a lot of people have followed his system so you get people to opt in you pay for traffic you get people to opt in and then as soon as they opt in you offer them a consultation with you and if they don't take you, you up on that then they go through a marketing sequence that you know that gives them value teaches them a bit of results in advance is what Frank calls it and then mm -hmm. um, you offer them a consult again and if they don't take you up on it at the end of that sequence then you put them into a, a sequence where you're building relationship and then you offer them your next thing down um, but if you get the consult with them um, you you are able to be prescriptive you're able to listen to their challenges and then write a prescription if you like of what what they need to do and and you know yeah. if where they are now so it's it's a consultative selling process but it's very very client focused and it, if you do it well and genuinely with the client's best interest in mind it's very um enjoyable for both parties so i've i've been just you know because because i i need to shake up you know i've been running my marketing the same for a long time so i thought let's just shake it up and turn it all around and i'm definitely getting so much more engagement with people as they go through these sequences so that's what's fueled by far neil stafford and frank kern together <laughs> wow that's quite a fire isn't it and i yeah. love i love the i love the, the similarity there um because you can't use that consultative style unless you are really confident in your high end high end package can you it's that yeah. it's the it's the mix of both that that i guess it's, it's the authority um from, from taking that style it's about leading the conversation leading you know leading the consultation yeah it, it is it, it is really interesting and, and it also obviously people have to fill in a few details before you they can't just put, put themselves in your diary willy-nilly so um I, that hasn't you know that's only been yielding quite low level applications so far and i don't mean low level as in the people i mean just that you know what's 
what stage they're at at their in their business. But um, you know, I have found you know I, I rewrote um, one of my books um, for the for 2016. So I wrote it in 2011. So I've rewritten that and I'm giving that away on um, on Facebook as a a lead generator and oh my god it's it's I know it's getting me new new leads for 60p each which is astonishing because I've only ever wow. got them down to three pound fifty before. <laughs> now why but, hasn't that popped up on my feed yet? I should be checking that out later. Um because I'm only targeting certain people very tightly so unless you've liked okay. one, of, one of the two interest groups that I've 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 selected you won't see it yet. But yeah okay. no it's it's good. I, I highly recommend it. If 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 you've got a book that you can give away that's even even better one that's on Amazon. Obviously, you have to look mm. at your publishing contract. But if you could write a book, get it on Amazon, and then you can then give it away, and it's got a perceived value, which is true because it's on Amazon. Then um, mm. you know, then it just converts like crazy. I don't I don't know why why it does, but people love books even if they don't know how to read them. <laughs> I love holding books. I love reading right. fiction. Fiction fiction's great on Kindle, but business books personal development stuff, I love being able to hold, scan, um, never You're really right. gotten away from that love of the paper book. No, I'm, I'm with you there. I, I don't mind reading fiction on Kindle, but but I do love to have the physical copy if it's a particularly good business book. But I think you could, you know, my, we were talking about this, my, my sister and I the other day, because I've got a cupboard full of books I need to sort out, and um, oh, and she was saying, you know, she was saying you can, if it's something really good, you can always order it afterwards if you really feel the need to have the physical copy. I'm always thinking I'd like to leave it for the kids, but I know that they'll never get around to read. <laughs> oh, dear. If you are bored by working for someone else, or tired of trading time for money, or a business owner who's ready to travel and have adventures, then Own It The Summit is for you. We interviewed 18 inspiring entrepreneurs enjoying unique lives. Now you can dip into those lives and decide which of the business models will work for you. Our interviews will show you how to design your dream life beyond the laptop and how to live and work in your favourite ways and places. Our intrepid 18 share the tools and techniques they use to work on the go and what living and working in total freedom really feels like. Find out more at ownitthesummit.com. So tell us your um, client challenge of the week then, because you, you, know, you said you're bringing one of your own, which, which will be lovely. Give us a good old description of it. Okay, a good old descri a description. So if I was to sum it up very briefly, and then I'll tell you the story behind it. Okay. My question is, curiosity versus consistency, are they mutually exclusive? Ooh. So the story is that I was away with my tribe of coaches, the group of coaches I'm really close to, um, last spring, or last year, spring. And... Um, as we sat outside this gorgeous cafe on a beautiful um, some, you know, spring afternoon, we were asked to think about what our superpower is. And we had a conversation around the table about each person's superpower. And I was really surprised to find that mine was deemed to be curiosity. Um, I think it was quite sexy, actually, of all the things I could be known for. Don't mind being known, being a bit curious about the world. <laughs> and um, what people saw in me was the ability to stay in curiosity and to ask great questions, which is a fantastic quality as a coach yeah. when you are exploring your client's world, you're helping them to get out of all of the, you know, the self-judgment and the comparison with others. Um, curiosity and playfulness are hugely, hugely useful. Um, and I realized, as I've thought about that obviously over the last year, I do it in so many ways. I've never been afraid to come off the main roads and see where, you know, find the different route through the back roads or take time out of a book or a film to consider the, you know, the what ifs in the subplot. But it's not such a great skill when you are a business owner and you need to show up consistently in your business rather than, you know, in my coaching. So I love variety. I like a bit of blogging, a bit of video, a bit of speaking, even yeah. the occasional guest podcast. Um, 
So I guess my question is, or the challenge is, how do I use my curiosity, if that's what I'm good at, to be more consistent when I show up in my business? And, and I notice lots of consistency in what you do, Nicola. So I'm really interested in your, in your thoughts on this one. Well, I'm absolutely astonished you notice any consistency whatsoever because <laughs> I'm sitting here listening to you. Show oh, I'm just like me. I'm just like that. I'm so curious about everything. That's why I want wow. to try every new software that comes on the market because I want to know what it can do and what it can do for me. So, so tell. So, okay. So, so it's it, you. You feel it leads you to being consistent um, in terms of regularly outputting content on certain platforms is, is yeah. there any other is, is there anything else that you feel you're inconsistent in that you would like you think you should be more consistent with oh I, I, yeah I, I guess like lots of people it's always good to be more consistent in your admin um but but at the moment I can you know I'm, I'm used to managing lots of detail in my head and I do that very well so it's for me it's about how do I how do I you know prevent my curiosity from I guess taking me into shiny, shiny syndrome to the extent that then I'm not showing up consistently, marketing myself well, you know, being really visible um, in the world and, and beginning to tackle, I guess, the point that you made earlier around the risks of being a referral, you know, referral led business. Yeah. Because part of that is, is about being more visible in a, in a consistent and sustainable way, isn't it? So how do you see, how do you perceive that I'm, I'm consistent? Because this will get, give me a clue as to what you need. So for me, it's about you're known for what you do. Um, even, even the far, even, you know, the most basic example is that we're talking here today. So I have lots of people say to me, you really should do a podcast. And I think, really? Would I show up every week to do the same thing? Yeah, you know, with a different different audience, different guests, different content. But but would I show up every week? Um, okay. I've been really honest here. I don't know if I would. Well, I'm going to be really honest, and I'm going to tell you that I am the the most hopeless person on the planet for consistency. I I would have been much bigger, much much earlier if I'd just been consistent. What's happened in the last few years is I worked hmm. for someone who is. Mr. Blooming Curious and Mr. Blooming Inconsistent, but he taught me about outsourcing and then he bullied me into doing it. And what I found was that there are people in the world who love to tick things off lists and those are the people you outsource every single bit of your task to that you don't um, like to do or aren't good at. So with my Business Success Factory podcast, how I got into podcasting, I've been podcasting on and off for years, but very badly. Mm. And, and, you know, I was into it in 98, 99, because you could do um, blog talk radio and all sorts back then. And but but with, with the real I decided I wanted to do a podcast. And my sister, Sarah, is so organized. She's like Judith. You know, she's just really, really organized. She's really good at and she's relentless. You know, so so I might not have felt like turning up one week. But if she had a, if I had a guess that she'd taken, you know, four weeks to organize, there was no way on the planet I was going to let her down. So mm. it's it's about making something bigger than you and being accountable to someone who you don't want to let down. It's like I would never on a million years miss a podcast episode with Judith because although we don't have to actually I'm half she's been brilliant at organising all the, you know, people who help co hosting the last few weeks, but um but but she I just wouldn't do it. She's someone whose respect I want and you know, I let you know, sometimes she I do things that annoy her, but I, I don't want to lose that respect, so I just simply wouldn't not turn up. So there's there's one thing is get someone to organise it all for you, and and these people you know are, t are ten to fifteen dollars an hour in in places like you know the the, the mid uh, sorry um, Eastern Europe and the Philippines, the Far East. Mm -hmm. And so you want someone, and you just need to write down a simple system that you would like them to follow, and then they, they will get on with it. In the same way that now this podcast generates content, the client challenge of the week and the business word of the week ge generates new content every single week, which then my VA, Patricia, takes and she puts on to, um, she gets transcribed to the client challenge of the week. It goes into the membership site as new content. It goes onto my blog as a new blog post. Um, she, I, I then create memes from, from the podcast 
And so I literally leverage those two bits of content so that I'm putting something out every day. But it's not me. Not me doing it, because if it was me doing it, yeah. it wouldn't get done. <laughs> so you, you just make your curiosity about the front end stuff, about the new topics to talk about, the new tools on the market, you know, whatever you're curious about and naturally fascinated by, and, and create content in one format that's easy for you. It's either going to be audio, video, or writing. And let me tell you, audio is much easier than video, as Judith knows full well, because she flatly refuses to go on any video. <laughs> Because you don't have to worry about what you look like, you don't have to worry about what your background looks like, you don't have to worry about um, the lighting, you just talk. You know, we're having a conversation today and that's turning into two awesome bits of content that then get leveraged across social media, not by me. So does that help at all? Yeah, it does. Because um, I, I think that there are three things. There's the, the practicalities of outsourcing and that's something I don't sit and think about very often. So that's really a really useful reminder. Um, there's tapping, as you've just said, tapping straight back into that curiosity to, to, to create good content, which is the stuff that I'm interested in. Um, and, and then the third thing is, is the way that you've described that reminds me it's about the personal responsibility. And like you, I would feel that really strongly if somebody else, you know, if I'm turning up to somebody else. Um, so, the bit, so I'm, the bit I'm working on is showing up yeah. for myself, but you know. Yeah. Um, that, that loyalty and, and responsibility is, is hugely important to me too. So even, really from the point of, even from the point of view of um, sometimes I don't edit the podcast as quickly as I should. I'm, def I'm doing it right now uh, straight afterwards and I'm hoping to get into that habit because Judith needs to be able to do the show notes. She wants to listen to it and she can't do that until I've edited it. So she yeah. needs to do the show notes and she wants to do those as quickly as possible after the podcast is recorded because We've got we we publish a week in arrears, and also I've got the responsibility of my VA. She has to she does the final bit of um try, you know balance equalizing the sound. So she has to equalize the sound. She has to go to Judith's blog post. She has to put you know do the embed code and all that stuff. And she can't do it until I've uploaded the edited version. I've uploaded the picture she can use, um, and. If she can't do it, then it, the podcast doesn't go. It could go out on time, but it, it it's likely won't, and and she won't earn yeah. her money. So there's something around my responsibility towards Judith because she's a colleague and I respect her a lot. My VA yeah. who can't earn her money unless I do my bit. And yeah. I don't know why I was so resistant to the whole outsourcing thing. I just felt it was more for hassle to tell someone what to do than to do it yeah. myself. I, think I didn't feel. Yeah, I didn't feel that um, they would do it as well as I would, which is absolute rubbish because 90% yep. of the time they do it better than me. <laughs> and it actually gets done. <laughs> you know. so, yeah, yeah, that's I, it. Those are hard ones I hear lots of people refer to when they talk about outsourcing. Those that, you know, they're, they're probably the top two, aren't they? You know, podcasting is so awesome. You know, you, it goes... It goes onto your blog, so we've got you know we've got a blog running all the time that's got show notes that's got keywords in, so the search engines love it because it's constantly updated relevant content. I haven't said that for a while, and um, and then you know Judith takes the topic of the client challenge as her her blog post topic for the week, but she just writes it up in her own words. So it gives her a constant stream of not having to think of ideas for her blog posts. And then I, I as I say, get, get the client challenge transcribed. It goes into my membership site, it goes onto my blog. And so that's all keyword orientated as well. Don't ever forget the search engine benefits. But I could if I wanted to, and I did with Business Success Factory. I, I used to um, send the audio um, and, and a little chat called Cyril in um, it wasn't like he's in India. Cyril um, used to turn it into a video for me, upload it to YouTube, put in the title and description, and then make it live. And I, you know, just let me know when it was done. I'd go and check it. So, you know, you could be turning audio yeah. into video as well. Yeah. And the best thing about YouTube is that it's not ephemeral. It's, you know, you do a Facebook live video, and yes, you, you can download it and do stuff with it, but if you put it on YouTube, it sits there working away for you forever if you get the um, the title and the description right. Yeah, that's a really lovely, that's a really lovely example, isn't it? I would never have yeah. thought of putting it on YouTube. Yeah, if you go to um, YouTube and search how to be everywhere on, everywhere online, Nicola Cairncross, you'll find mm -hmm. um, 
a presentation I did to with Veronica Pullen, who was also one of our, our um, summit Hiya. guests, and I was explaining to her how we used to leverage things right, you know, from from a blog post right through to a digital magazine, a YouTube channel, a podcast, just from Neil, my business partner, writing two blog posts a week. So I think that'll open your eyes to the power of leveraging and outsourcing. That's a great tip. I'm definitely doing that later. Yeah. The tip for outsourcing is not to expect one person to do every single stage of the game. What you need is a, a great virtual assistant, you know, who's like a super secretary, if you like, and yeah. she, she or he will coordinate all the other pieces. So Neil used to write his blog post, and then he used to email it to Patricia, and she would put it on as a blog post, and then... Um, she would let Matt know that we were ready for him to read the blog post out loud to make the audio recording, and then he would then send it to Patricia, who would send it off to um, uh, what was her name, Praveena in in Pakistan. She was in Pakistan, and she used to take the blog post and make it into slides for you know PowerPoint slides, and then Praveena would send her PowerPoint slides to Patricia. She would send both the PowerPoint slides and the audio to. Um, Cyril in, in India, who used to put the two together so that the slides came up at the right time of, of what was being said, and then he would say, he would put it up onto YouTube, and then Patricia would also turn Neil's the best of Neil's eight blog posts a month into a digital magazine by sending it off to a graphic designer in Brighton. <laughs> you know, it really was a machine. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was a machine, and it cost us about two hundred and fifty to one hundred seventy dollars a month to get that wow. done from all of those people. Good heavens! So you can have a real automated marketing machine from yeah. either writing two blog posts a week, or one blog post a week, even, or um, or having a podcast every week. Isn't that interesting? I never have that vision when I sit and write a blog post. Well, you, you know, Neil, Neil, Neil didn't really hamper him. I mean, writing for SEO is hard. You know, if you think, oh, this blog post has got to be about this key phrase, it really stilts you. It's much better yeah. to write, write the blog post and then look back at it afterwards and think, okay, so what's the business orientated key phrase that blog post is about? And, you know, this is where yeah. the old Google Keyword Planner comes in really well because if you're considering two or three phrases to make the focus of your blog post after you've written it, it's much better to go and check which two or three phrases are getting the most search results. And if one is more appropriate than the other, you use it even if it's got less search results. But if one is more appropriate um, and has the biggest number of searches, then that's the key phrase you target as the title, the description, the last you make sure it's in the last um, paragraph of your blog post. You make sure it's in the tags of your blog post. And and YouTube works exactly the same way. So you make sure that the key phrase is in the title of the video, the first line of the video, the last paragraph of the video, and um, the tags of the video. And you're gonna you're gonna get traffic from YouTube. You're gonna get traffic from onto your blog. You know the audio goes onto iTunes, so that's reaching a whole new audience again. And if you do enough blogging, you could get it turned into a digital magazine, which then went on to Amazon. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, it begins with a U. Oh, I can't remember. Ooh. Digital magazine um, place. Oh no, you know it's gone. It's gone. It begins, it begins with a U. I'll, it'll come back to me. Um, okay. And and it used to go. It used to go onto Kindle iTunes magazine rack as well. That's another one. Wow. Yeah. So you know, it can it, you can you can leverage as far and near as you want. I mean, the, the slides that Provina used to make used to go onto SlideShare. Um, if you've got a professional account at SlideShare, you can upload audio to go with it as well. You know, it's just <laughs> it's just it, so it, many platforms. That is that really is an awesome. Um, it's not even a summary, is it? I, I don't think you finished. It's a um, blueprint. No, I've just remembered something else. I just remembered yeah, Medium. That's another place. If you're writing great blog posts, put them on Medium as well. Because I can't that's wait the... to listen to this back. <laughs> <laughs> well, go and check out the How to Leverage. Um, you know, How to Be Everywhere Online by Nicola Cancross on on YouTube, and that'll give. You... It's a it's a um, mind map. You know, I did it as a mind map. All the different things you oh, can do. Fabulous. I'm Good. so glad I asked about my curiosity. Yeah, well, now you can just carry on being curious and funnel it into blog post or a podcast, and off you go. Get, you know, if you've got a great gang of um, 
co-coaches you hang out with, would, would any of those be great co-presenters? Because I definitely prefer doing yeah. a conversation one with Judith than I ever did doing just interviews. That's, that, you, uh, that has really got me thinking. Uh, sure. Some yeah, different that, that complimentary. Now, Judith and I, you know, we're, we sort of work in the same market, but we're very, very different, and our clients are very, yeah. very different. What's your word of the week then? I can't believe I'm going to say this because I've just used it at least three times in what you've just said. So my word of the week is a word that I'm getting really cautious of. And it's wow. And the reason I'm getting cautious of it is that I listened to a podcast. I can't remember who it was about. No, it was a, it was a webinar six or eight weeks ago. And they were talking about how, um, how people are getting trapped into the need to impress people and actually what we need to do, uh, whether it's as coaches or as business owners or as leaders, um, is actually to create impact, not to impress. Uh, and they used it to illustrate the difference between share, just sharing our knowledge and actually being prepared to share our experience. Um, you know, to be honest, to be open um, and, and to share what it's really like so that, so that we all learn. Um, but also to share where we're making really good impact too. So uh, I've just seen this kind of increase in questions about yeah, how are you wowing your customers? And, um, and it just makes me nervous, Nicola. It, I just want to see people really creating great impact in the world. Um, share knowledge by all means, um, but, but let's share experience too and, and share where it's making a real difference in what we do. Yeah, because That's you can tell week. someone what to do, but if you don't say why it's important and how you know it's something that's important, people yeah. aren't going to listen, are they? Yeah, it, it's the how, isn't it? That's what we need to learn from. What, what is it and how does it work? How did it make a difference? Um, and why is it important? Yeah. So, so to me, it's, it's the difference between impact and impressing. Yeah, I'm interested because there's a lot of people, um, obviously, you know, when you're on Facebook, you, you only see your own stuff or the, the stuff of the people you interact with. So I'm interested to, about this. Do you, mean that, do you mean that you're seeing coaches sharing stuff that they think is going to attract clients because it's aspirational or what? What, what, what exactly triggered this? Um, it, it was, it's, it's people looking for, you know, how are you impressing your clients? And, and I don't know if impressing is enough because, we, because going back to the, the webinar I was listening to, it was about you know, in, in, if we're impressing people, we're simply sharing knowledge. Yeah. Um, when we create real impact, we are, we are in an experience. We're sharing our experience. We're sharing our learning. Uh, and to me, that's really important that you know, whether I'm a new client or an established client, I want to know that the person I'm in business with for whatever purpose that might be, is creating the impact that I need them to, to make. Not just that they know their stuff, but that they walk their talk, that they are their talk. Yeah, a good, good, it comes back, I think, to good personal leadership and taking good personal responsibility. So, okay, so you're not talking about people trying to impress in the, from the point of view of, um, you know, sharing their cars and their houses and their fabulous families and their gorgeous holidays in Provence. We were talking about trying people trying to impress with how much they know, without giving it any context. Yeah, and, and so I guess it's more the sense that people feel it's important to impress, however they might be doing that, because you know we're all triggered by different things, aren't we? And we're all motivated by different things. So. You know what? What motivates me in terms of you know, impresses me might be completely different to what impresses you. But what I guess is important to both of us is is that the person we are listening to or reading um, or considering working with uh, can create the impact in our lives or our business that we need them to create. Mm. So, There's lots um, done by testimonials and case studies for me. I like to see yeah. who, who else. I mean, we were taught by you know the master of quote hanging your ass out in public, which was um, Chris Barrow. He taught us all back in 1998 to be as authentic as possible. And I've sometimes yeah. strayed across the line on that one. I think <laughs> to my own detriment in the fact that yeah. you can be too revealing about the challenges you're facing. Um, 
which which is unattractive to some people perhaps but the, it's attractive to the right people and uh, it definitely makes for a nicer way to live online yeah. because you don't have to worry about what people think of you and or, or whether they're judging you or not because you know you can just get over yourself and just get on with it i remember well, it's interesting you say that because the way that judith and i met was i was a guest on somebody's webinar and one of the questions that came at the end was it somebody commenting that they were surprised i'd been so honest about you know, my own hurdles and challenges. Um, and I don't think they ever go away. You know, every step that we take up or every time we try to do something different, we run into another bit of resistance or another bit of learning. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the bigger the step we take, the bigger the next bit of resistance is. So it's yeah. not about reaching perfection. And, you know, it's far more, for me, it had far more impact on that webinar to share, the, to share honestly what it's like, you know, at the next step for me, um, than it is to be really impressive and to share, you know, all the work in the world about resistance and, and fear of failure and lack of confidence and all this stuff. It's not yeah. just about knowledge. It's about this is what it's really like. And, and your experience might be slightly different to mine, but, but be prepared for there will be an experience. <laughs> um, and and don't, don't be afraid of, 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 of being in that experience. And, and learning from it because that's where the growth is yeah cool well my word of the week is transformation i'm not going to say too much Ooh. about it because I, I want to save um save something for when judith comes back and announces she's her move is complete um but i am determined to change my life i think the first step towards that is making space for me to work out what i want next because um what i want next is, is of necessity changed so uh yeah so that's that's my word transformation Tell me about your project updates. You you hinted earlier. You teased us earlier with um with uh, alluding to to what you're working on. So okay, so I've got I think I've got three. One is the guest lecturer role that I've already discovered. So um you know working out the content for that and putting the flesh on the bones, so to speak. The second is really interesting because it parallels to what you've just said. I have, feel a real need for some decluttering and creating space at the moment. Um, and uh, yesterday, I did something I never do, and I won a competition. Um, you won a and book competition. I won a book competition, real book. And um, buried in the middle of this list of books I will now receive um, is the book that I've watched people revel in over the last few months, the um, Marie Kondo book about magical tidying. So I'm looking forward to my life changing through... Um, through some focus on decluttering and creating space. And then I guess my big project, and I'm, I'm going to commit here and now to making it live tomorrow. Um, this, is, this is, I guess, my first test of the consistency I was talking about earlier. Um, and I'm launching the Unstoppable Leaders Lounge as a new group on Facebook. So um, where, unlike, I guess, the zillions of Facebook groups that help you to know what to do to be successful. This group is about looking at who we need to be to achieve the success we want for ourselves. And I see us focusing on three key elements, uh, and I think I've probably touched on them in our conversation. There's um, personal responsibility, personal leadership, and then mental skills mastery. So a really nice kind of online, hopefully developing version of some of the work I'm going to be doing with the university too. Excellent. Can you just tell us the name again? Because I missed the first word. The Unstoppable Leaders Lounge. Got it. Unstoppable Meet Leaders Lounge. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. And, and is that open to everyone, that one? Is it like an open discussion group? It is an open discussion group. Um, I, you know, for me, we're all leaders in different ways, whether that's in our home or our community or our business or our life. So um, I think we all have experience of leadership, and if we want to learn more about being better at being a personal leader, then hopefully this is a group that will enable people to explore that. Very That's nice. my aim for it. Yeah, cool. Um, I, my project updates are a brief, uh, mercifully, as we are galloping towards the top of the hour. Yeah. Um, basically, people are coming through my new funnel. Um, I've put, you know, obviously the book giveaway is getting me lovely, you know, leads at, at 
very inexpensive rates. So the first people who are coming through the, the funnel on that, I've definitely noticed, um, I'm using the ask, I'm rolling everything in, it's all like product launch formula, Frank Kern's book, Neil's idea about top down, and then um, the ask, Ryan Levesque ask book, um, I'm also doing his course, but uh, in the book, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, what should I write in my follow-up emails? Well, Ryan's got a nice 12 email format to to basically sell, you know, sell anything or launch anything by email. And um, mm. go and check out the book if you want a nice structured format. I'm finding it really easy to use. Um, and, you know, you can actually copy the you know the template so you've got a template in Infusionsoft or whatever you can actually copy the template and then just fill in the blanks which is which is really very nice right. so I'll, I'll report Matt next week on um, on you know whether I start to make more sales because of restructuring it all uh, product the science of getting rich online um, the video continues to grow views apace and generate opt-ins that's my free um, lead gener thing on the personal development front and um, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got that open on my desk at all times. So basically, as I think yeah. of something, I'm I'm doing version. I'm on one one point four now, and when I get to version say two or two or th or two point five, I'll probably put it up on Amazon. But uh, I just want to make sure I've got a discussion group going for the book, and so people are letting me know about typos and things as, as we go as well, which is great. Finally, yeah, who or what's impressed you, Sue? So, um, after my little dialogue about impressing, I'm going to who's inspired me this week, Nicola. Okay. And um, I watched the most simple and utterly compelling short video yesterday by um, somebody I met at a networking lunch in London the day I registered for my business. So, um, Joan Wallington, some people might know on Facebook or Instagram, um, and she has become Joan Kennedy, the artist. So yesterday, this little video popped up in my Facebook feed, and she had put together a series of photos that annotated her journey as an artist. And the voiceover was Joan telling her story of following her art. And what I loved was the way it was so simply portrayed and so gently shared. Um, and in just one minute, she shares how she wasn't sure what she was meant to do, that it's been a long journey finding out. And then there were some beautiful phrases. She talked about, you just make a wish that you'll find a way, which I think was really topical with the, you know, with the death of Jean Wilder the day before and you know, the importance he reminded us of imagination. And for Joan, it was realizing that she wanted to be an artist. And in the video, she's really honest that it's a struggle. Um, but she tells the story of writing a scrappy dog book, and the images are beautiful. So actually, it was the way that she told the story that, that caught my attention. So she tells how she's, um, and I'll use her words, she worked her way through the paintings, she made mistakes, she started again, not feeling she was good enough, and starting again. And then she shows the images of the dog, but also the mouse who is meant for bigger things. And she talks of her own self-doubt, but how she pulls herself out and creates magic, still working her way through and becoming an artist. Um, so I contacted her quickly yesterday and said, I'd love to share this story. Um, is it okay? And, and she just told me how, you know, in the first uh, 30 years of you know, trying to decide this, you know, this route, she sold 40 paintings as a hobby, wow. <laughs> but now she's made a decision that she should have made a long time ago to pursue it to a proper career. So, you know, her dream is to be represented by a gallery, just like the mouse in the book, aiming for bigger things. But the challenge is, is being seen. So, um, yeah, if anybody sees it, please share it. But it's a beautiful example of the magic that we can create if we allow ourselves the curiosity to explore our imagination and believe in ourselves and start to take steps that allow our dream to unfold. What's, um, where is it in this video? Is it something we could embed on the podcast? Or is yeah, it in, on YouTube? Or? We would love that. That would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, can, I can send that to you afterwards. It's on Facebook. I'll share it with you. Brilliant. And the other thing she should do, if it's, like, if it's only a minute long, is she should share it on Instagram stories. Because she, will... she, I know she is on Instagram, so I will, I'll feed that back to her just to yeah. make sure she is. Yeah, brilliant. Lovely. Well, I look, forward to, I look forward to seeing that. 
My okay. um, my Who or What's Impressed is a book called Hustle by Jesse Tevelo. And Ooh. Hustle, yeah, it's is um, it's the life changing effects of constant motion. And he, he, I'm very keen on action taking, and I'm very keen on action taking even when you don't know what you're doing, because it leads <laughs> to something else. Well, it does. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah, standing you're right. still, nothing, nothing's going to happen. But if you're in in motion, things are going to happen. And and uh, yeah, so it's, I've, I know how. I haven't even I haven't even got a, a quarter of the way into it yet. But I know a book's good where I'm already tweeting quotes from it after about yeah, a read yeah. of about five minutes. And Jesse's only a young chap. He's um, I think he's a friend of. Uh, I think he's Australian. I'm not sure. He's he's probably probably a fan of Dan Dan Norris, which is why why it's come to my attention. But I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So the hustle, the life changing effects of constant motion by Jesse Tevelo, T E V E L O W. Ah. And there we go. End of the show. Nearly in t- on time. And by the time I've edited, it might be. You never know. Thank you, um, Sue Revel, for joining me. Revel, Sue Revel or Revel, whichever you prefer. And where can they ever oh, find you, Sue? <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation. It's been great fun. Thank you Good. so much. Where can we find you online, Sue? You can find me at, at www.magentachange.com. Tell us again because um, the, 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 um, the sound cut out. So it's www.magentachange.com. Okay. I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. So um, kind of dotted around social media. And but if 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 you know shortly you'll be everywhere online and consistently so too. <laughs> you are so right. I've got a funny feeling you'll be checking in to make sure I am. Oh yeah, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so it's been awesome. Thank Thanks you, Nicola. It's been great. Bye bye. You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It: Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com.